In this video, we'll show you how to implement a professional web dashboard on the STM32 microcontrollers. We're going to use a Nucleo F756ZG development board, but the same approach will work with any STM32 with a built-in Ethernet interface. Connect the dev board to your workstation, go to mongoose.ws and click on the big blue button. This opens the interactive web dashboard builder. Select Create New Project and click Next. Choose an output directory. Select the Nucleo F756, QBYDE, and FreeRTOS and click Next. Choose the empty dashboard, click Next, then click Finish. Let's configure three pages the Dashboard page, the Settings page, and the Firmware Update page. On the Dashboard page, we'll show information cards displaying the device name which we can customize the current tick number and RAM usage statistics, total available RAM and free RAM. We'll show the current tick because this board does not have a handy built-in sensor that we can use. So the tick number would be a simulation of the sensor reading. Each card references an API variable, which we'll configure shortly. Let's also add a panel for LED control. Set the toggle reference to LEDs.LED1, LED2, and LED3, and mark them as autosave so it would not need the explicit save button. On the settings page, add a single panel for the configurable device name. Set the input field reference to settings.deviceName. On the firmware update page, add a panel for firmware updates. Use an upload button of type firmware update. We are done with the UI controls. Now, let's configure the REST API endpoints that the UI controls are bound to. We can see that the firmware update endpoint has been added automatically when we placed an OTA button. Mongoose has built-in firmware update support for a variety of microcontrollers. STM32 is one of the supported microcontrollers, so when we add this API endpoint, we automatically get working firmware update functionality. Let's add the rest of the endpoints. The next endpoint is LEDs for the LED control, with attributes called LED1, LED2, and LED3 of type Boolean. The next endpoint is settings, with a single attribute device name of type string. Let's give it a default value of my device. Next, the state endpoint, with the following attributes, ticks, RAM total, and RAM free. Now the dashboard design is complete. Click on the Generate button. The Mongoose wizard creates the STM32 project code in the output directory. Open the generated project in the cube IDE. Open the serial console. Build and flash the firmware. We can see the sign IP address in the debug log. Open it in the browser. Now we can see the dashboard exactly as we designed it in the wizard, but now served by the STM32 device. Notice that the LED toggle currently does nothing, and all the displayed values are mock values served by the default callback functions defined in mongooseglue.c. The next step is to override those default callback functions with our own so that all REST API endpoints, and therefore all UI controls, interact directly with our STM32 device. You are watching the Mongoose channel. Mongoose is a network stack for embedded devices, with just two files, mongoose.c and mongoose.h. It includes the TLS stack as well. If you're building a professional web UI dashboard for your device, or need to connect to an MQTT server, click on the link below this video. Let's start with the LED control. In main.c, add two functions, my get LEDs and my set LEDs, which read from and write to the respective GPIO. Next, let's override the state endpoint. Add my get state function that reads the current tick, total RAM, and free RAM. Finally, the settings endpoint. Implement two functions, my get settings and my set settings, which read from and write to our settings structure. But since this board does not have any external flash or EEPROM, 
we will use a mock variable in RAM, just like a default handler does. After Mongo's init, add calls to Mongo set HTTP handlers to replace the default handlers with our custom ones. This time, instead of flashing the firmware, let's use the firmware update functionality. For the firmware update, we need to have a bin file. By default, cube ID creates only elf file. To build the bin file, open project properties, C++ build settings, MCU post build output, and enable convert to binary. Build the firmware. Open the firmware update page and select the freshly built firmware.bin file. The upload takes several seconds. Now, on the updated dashboard, we can see real hardware values. The tick number reports the number of milliseconds since boot. Total heap size is 64k and free is about 44k. This board has 320k of RAM, but the free RTOS is configured to use only 64k. The LED control works as expected. You can toggle the LED on and off directly from the dashboard. On the settings page, you can change the device name and the change is reflected on the dashboard page. And of course, the firmware update functionality works. Congratulations! You have successfully built a robust, professional-looking device dashboard in just a few minutes. Hit like and subscribe if you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.